Join me right now on Kumite TV is one championship super series flyweight, Josh Tona. What's going on, Josh? Welcome to the show. G'day, mate. Thanks for having me. No worries, man. Uh, you started your kickboxing career at the age of 18. It's kind of late compared to a lot of the guys that you're fighting now, right? A lot of go those guys started when they were like elementary school kids, right? Now, what are some of the benefits you see in starting your career later at, in life? Uh... Well, man, I don't know. I just, um, I found it late. Um, I just had a few things going on before. I was playing soccer and I was in a band and uh, martial arts and that sort of fighting competition didn't really interest me. But um, I guess like one thing like brain development is good, you know. I've like, I've gone through as a child without having any real trauma to my head, so uh, I think that's one thing, just being healthy and a bit more mature, you know, like I'm putting in a lot of effort now as an adult, so I think, yeah, they're probably the main reasons, mate. You think that because of this, you will be able to fight a lot longer, your career will be a lot longer compared to other guys, you know, because other guys like Muay Thai fighters, they they retire before they even hit the age of 30. Yeah, sure. Uh, I see, <clears throat> excuse me. I've seen a few guys... Um, going in until they're, uh, you know, like nearly into their 40s. Um, I, I hope I hope I'm one of those guys as long as I stay, uh, you know, fit and strong and keep my mobility up and all that. I don't want to be um, too old and, uh, sorry, I don't want to be like too broken when I'm old, you know. Um, yeah. Now let's go back to that being in a band. You're, are you still in that band? I want to know this. <laughs> nah, man, it was just a like a, a couple of years thing with my friends, uh, just playing punk rock music. I really loved uh, Blink-182, sort of just tried to follow their dream, you know. Oh, that's not a bad band to uh, follow, you know, to emulate yourself off of. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I really loved uh, Tom DeLonge, and the first band I ever saw was actually... Um, Blink one eight two. We I saw him at the play at the AIS just near where I live, and I actually ran my own kickboxing event at the AIS. So I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Have you seen Tom Long now? He's into like aliens and all kinds of wild stuff. Yeah, I saw a recent interview with him on the Joe Rogan podcast, and you know, I don't know. I didn't really like it. You know, I liked him back in the old back in the old days. I think he's still. Um, followed aliens and all that kind of stuff but it was like really going into it now you know yeah definitely some weird stuff now you did mention you played soccer for many years um is there anything is there anything you could take from soccer that uh that has helped you in the striking arts um uh i don't i don't really think so i think um no i, I don't really see anything with it like I had such a long break um, from from football going into fighting. I think I stopped when I was like 13 or something and didn't start competing until I was 18. So uh, maybe just health benefits, you know, like just training, that's all. But no, nothing really correlated between them for me all anyway. Right. All right, now let's get into the fight that you had earlier this year against yes. uh, Hiroki. Akimoto, you know, one of the top prospects in the division. He dropped a decision. Looking back at that performance, you know, what were some of the key takeaways? Uh, man, I have to be prepared all the time. Like, I just, my my skills, were, I thought my skills were up to date. I, like, I knew, like, he was really good as soon as I was in there with him. Um, I knew he was, he was good, but I just wasn't prepared. Like, my body wasn't prepared, so that's why it's easy for him to knock me down. Um, so I've learned from that, for sure. As soon as I got home, and I, start, I started hitting the gym. I got a strength and conditioning coach. So going from that fight into the next one, like I'm going to be much more uh, prepared um, physically. So that was the main thing, I think, that I took away from it. Um, and I think... Um, like looking back on some of these other fights, like with Lasiri and Akimoto, 
I noticed that man, anyone can anyone can win. And then going off uh, Petrosian and Pit Morricot as well, Yod Sinclair and Sammy Senna, just anyone can win. So I think I like I put him up really high on the pedestal, and I like sort of maybe held myself back a little bit, you know. But mainly uh, it was a condition, which I fixed now. Looking back at your track record for one championship, you have faced some top, top guys. You know, your debut, I believe, was against uh, Pet Dam, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you yeah. know, it's, who, who debuts against Pet Dam? You know what I mean? Now he's sitting there as the champion, right? So now from facing these guys in the beginning, it's like moving on with your career, it must feel it give you a little bit of more confidence to kind of face these other guys and kind of dominate them when you step into the cage or the ring. Yeah, I oh, mean, uh, I think anyone who gets signed with one, they're going to be pretty good. Um, so I've come to terms with that. But Pet Dam uh, was a different kettle of fish, you know. He, um, everyone was saying, like, you know, he's got a really good left kick, but when you're getting kicked by it, like, you just really don't know how fast it is. Uh, man, it was super fast. It was hard to, to read. And, you know, he had... had he was only, he's only 20 years old. He's had over 100 fights. Um, but yeah, going into like with some of these other guys, I think you know I faced Pet Dam. Um, I, I did. I lost, but like I, I know I can face these other guys with without any issue. Definitely. Now let's talk a little bit about Pet Dam. He just recently won the flyweight title by defeating Elias. Now, did you watch this fight? Because a lot of people thought. Pet them lost this fight. Mm. Did you? Do you think? What is your breakdown? What is your assessment of that fight? The title belt. Um, I, I did watch it. Um, yeah, I thought uh, Elias lost. Uh, Elias won. Sorry. Yeah, I think he was. Um, he uh, worked better with his hands, and man, he defended a lot of the a lot of um, Pet Dumb's kicks. Um, I think the call was a bit controversial. I think. Uh, if there's a like Pet Dunn's next fight for the belt, I think it should be a rematch with Elias. I think he, he deserves it, you know. I completely agree with you, man. <laughs> yeah, and everyone is saying that, like, uh, yeah, I feel sorry for him. You know, he it was a yeah. I don't know what the decision should have been. Maybe like a a DQ or something. Like mm-hmm. they shouldn't have given him the belt because I thought Elias was winning the fight. So a rematch is definitely there. All right, man, let's get into your next fight. You're taking on Yoshihisha Morimoto in KL on July 12th. What are your thoughts on him, you know, as an opponent and his skill set? Uh, I think he's going to be tough. Um, he's sort of got a, a traditional Japanese style, which I would call, like, sort of karate and, like, sort of almost a bit awkward. Um, he is strong, so my defense has to be on point. Um, the plan is, I think, just to keep really busy and active, just keep on him. Um, I've uh, prepared well. I'm really fit. So I think if I can just keep the pressure on him, uh, I don't think he'll be able to keep up with me. The things I have to wor- worry about is the big sort of looping punches he throws, and they come out of nowhere, you know. He can be real jittery or it can be relaxed and he's really explosive so i just have i just have to be on on my uh, game your preparations you know um how long did you do this camp is this camp been longer than normal or is it just a you know same as usual uh same as usual we got um like sort of just over four weeks notice actually probably one of the longest ones um but before that like I was training sort of as soon as I got home, maybe a week after I got home from that Komodo fight. I got the strength and conditioning coach, and I've been training for it maybe like eighteen weeks or something. So, like I'm definitely stronger. And my conditioning's a lot better. Uh, my sort of original trainer, uh, Gary Hamilton, he's um. He's gone uh, back home to England. He's gone there for 10 weeks. So it was a bit unfortunate he left. But also a bit of a blessing. I've um, teamed up with a guy called Kieran Walsh. He's from uh, Moy U, just in the same suburb. And um, he's got a wealth of knowledge as well. So 
when I found out about the fight, I sent him a message and um, he said, yeah, man, let's let's get into it. So I've been training with him for, um, for the whole time I found out. And, man, it's been really good. Uh, he's confident in me. Um, I'm confident in myself as well. Who have you been, you know, sparring with, you know, training partners that have been kind of emulating uh, your opponent for you? Um, a lot of the guys from Moyu, there's a few tall people. Cause I think uh, I think um, he's going to be a little bit taller than me. So we've got a few taller guys. And I've got a few guys from my gym as well. Um, uh, my uh, location, gym location is a bit far away from, from other people. So uh, I just have to sort of deal with what I have around. Um, I actually, I've been getting a guy named Blade uh, Gilbertson. Uh, he's a few hours south of Canberra. He's he's come up a few times to come spa, but other than that, just the guys who are at my gym or at more youth. You've been with one championship for a year. How do you rate your you know rate yourself so far? Your performances. Um, well, I got comeback five of twenty eighteen against Lasiri. Man, that was like I really I really love that man. I've won a world title and I've like won fights overseas and that was like my happiest moment man I was like holding back tears like it was really good um the pet dumb fight is I think like my worst one I was a bit nervous going in there um and I only got like a few sort of good exchanges on my side um and that Komoda fight like I showed a lot of heart you know I um my whole goal with when I first started fighting was to fight in the K1, right? Uh, that was 2008. All I wanted to do was uh, fight in K1. And after like 10 years, I finally got there. And um, the fight only lasted 50 seconds. And I got I got knee to the body and I sort of just gave up. So from that moment on, and that was like I think two years ago, 2016, three years ago nearly, um, I said I'd never, never give up again. And coming up against Akimoto, you know, like the Japanese have a strong mind, strong will. Like I knew I'd have to push myself to um to to go through the fight. And so when he dropped me, I I was I was gonna I was willing to get knocked out or you know you never not give up. That's um so performance I was happy with that, but the conditioning really let me down. Um. Overall, man, I think I'm like a a strong fighter, and you know, a fighter that a crowd would want to see. You know, they won't give up. They'll put their their whole effort in. So, yeah, I rate myself pretty high. I think um, I'd put some bums on seats overseas. One last thing before I let you go. You know, you're fighting in MMA gloves. You know, what kind of adjustments have you had to make make since you know you've been fighting with the big gloves for so long? What are the key differences you see? Uh, well, you're definitely more hittable. Like, so your head movement has to be a little bit better. You have to be sort of better. You have to have better footwork just to get sort of out of the way. Um, you can't just block like a double forearm block. You know, you have to. You just get hit a lot easier. So that's a that's one of the main things. Um, and then on the other end, like you can hit people easier. Uh, and it's just. Uh, just being more aware, I think, of like, you can't just stand and trade. I think you have to sort of be a little bit smarter. Uh, but I always said to myself that I would never fight in MMA gloves. Um, John Wayne Parr had a promotion called Cage Muay Thai, and I saw it and I thought to myself, like, nah, you never catch me in, in those little gloves. And then, yeah, my um, I was sending out a few emails to a few promotions to get on, and um, one got back to me, and man, I was over the moon. And they said, "Oh, would you prefer to fight in big gloves, MMA gloves?" And I just said yes to everything: cage, ring, little gloves, big gloves. So I think it was just like signing with a big organization changed my mind. Um, and when I started fighting with them, I thought like it feels right, it feels good. So it's just getting over that sort of um, little hurdle of like having to actually do it, and but it's fine. Well, I'm looking forward to you uh, starting your second year of your career with one championship, July 12th. 
One Masters of Destiny, Malaysia. Thank you, Josh, for your time, and uh, good luck on your future, man. All right. Thanks for that, for reaching out and letting me jump on your show. I appreciate it.